Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy football video. Today's video is week three tight end start or sit decisions. Are you going to start this tight end? Are you going to sit them? What are you going to do? And I will tell you in this whole video. Before I start the video, I'd like to ask you, could please go down below and click that subscribe button because not only is it going to help me, it's also going to help you guys because I release so many videos every single week. I do two streams, one Thursday night, one Sunday before the games. So make sure you click that notification bell as well to get notified for all the streams and all the videos. Also, follow me on Twitter at NotoriousFNTSY. So let's get right into the video. The first game of the Monday slate is my Miami Dolphins at the Dallas Cowboys. Now you're going to be starting Jason Winton of the Dallas Cowboys. Now I know he may look like a robot while he's walking on the field. He doesn't move very fast, but what I do know is that he is a good tight end in fantasy this week. You could start anyone going up against the Dolphins. He is a touchdown dependent tight end, but I think he may be able to hop into the end zone this week, so that's why I'm confident in starting him. Now you're going to be setting down Mike Gesicki. That should be pretty obvious. You don't want to start anyone on the Miami Dolphins. They are all shit. Even with Rosen coming into the game, or I mean starting the game, Mike Gesicki still probably does not have any fantasy relevance. The next game here is the Bengals at the Buffalo Bills. So I'm going to be sitting all three of the tight ends in this game. Tyler Eifert is a very touchdown dependent guy. Now, unlike Jason Winton going up against the Dolphins, Tyler Eifert is also touchdown dependent, but he's going up against the uh, the Bills, who have an actually good defense that will be able to shut him down. I don't think he'll be able to hop into the end zone this week, and that's why I'm going to be sitting him this given week. Now, CJ Uzma, it's like a 60-40 split between Eifert and Uzma. You don't want either, you don't want to start either of these guys. They're both touchdown dependent. You may start the wrong one every single week, so that's why I typically just avoid those two. And then Dawson Knox was a good name to draft super late in fantasy football. Did he pan out? No, he did not pan out because the Bills don't really use the tight end all that much, and I just would not advise you starting him. You probably didn't even think about starting him. The next game here is the Lions at the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, you are going to be starting both TJ Hawking God for the Lions and Zach Ertz for the Eagles. Now, TJ Hawkinson, week one, had a banger of a game, dropped like 28 points in your opponent's mouth. It was amazing. It was glorious. Week two, he he sucked ass for your fantasy team, and you were disappointed. Now, what you got to understand is the tight end position changes from week to week. If you don't have one of those top five guys, the someone you pick up like Hawkinson may just shit in your mouth every once in a while. I think this week he has a bounce back game against the Eagles, and it's so hard not to start a guy with the potential that TJ Hawkinson has every single week. Now, Zach Ertz is a top three tight end this week. He is playing up against the Lions. Obviously, that's why Hawkinson is included in this, but the Eagles are all banged up. It doesn't look like Alshon Jeffrey is going to play. Deshaun Jackson is not playing. So it's basically going to be the Zach Ertz and Nelson Aguilar show for the Eagles. Carson Wentz should be all good to go with his bruised wibs and his bruised ego because he sucks. And I think that Zach, <laughs> obviously, he's not that bad. I'm just playing with you guys. But Zach Ertz is going to be amazing this week as prob as Zach Ertz, not as Zach Ertz, as uh, Carson Wentz's safety blanket. The next game here is the Jets at the New England Patriots. And it, this is very simple. There's not much to break down. You're going to be setting everyone. Chris Herndon, not bike yet. And then the Patriots, Matt Lacoste. There's just a bunch of tight ends. Tight end carousel. You don't want to start any of those anyways. The next game here is the Falcons at the Indianapolis Colts. Now, you're going to be starting Austin Hooper in this game. Austin Hooper's pretty much in every single week start for your fantasy football team. You drafted him uh, in like the middle round, not in the middle rounds, towards the late back end of the draft. And he's just a guy that Matt Ryan targets a few times a game and will put up that solid production. If he hops in the end zone, you'll be very happy, but you're not disappointed starting Austin Hooper any week. And then Eric Ebron. Now I would start him, but he is risky. He's very touchdown dependent. Can he hop in the end zone against the Falcons? Maybe. They looked, the Falcons did not look all that good against Zach Ertz last week, so I think that Eric Ebron has the opportunity to score this week. Now, I would be sitting down Jack Doyle because I feel like it's just too risky playing Jack Doyle, a guy that had a rapport with Jacoby Brissett, Brissett a few years ago, but now that is not the same. The next game here is the Raiders at the Minnesota Vikings. I am going to be starting Darren Waller in this game. Darren Waller is in every single week start for me. He's going to be a top five tight end probably every single week in my rankings, if not the top eight. He's a great tight end, gets a lot of usage on the team. The Vikings defense, while pretty good, I think Darren Waller will succeed even if Tyrell Williams is in or out of the game. And they're going to be sitting down Kyle Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. Now, I know... He has a sick nickname, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but that does not get you any fantasy points. All the cool nicknames don't get you any points, so don't start Kyle Rudolph this week. Next game here is the game of the week, Ravens at 
the Kansas City Chiefs. So you're going to be starting both the tight ends of this matchup. Mark Andrews, the people's tight end, the, the 14th round wonder. Mark Andrews, is he has yet to disappoint. 20-plus point games two weeks in a row. I think this week he, or maybe it wasn't 20 points. It's above fi- I know it's above 18 point games every single week. Touchdown, both games. He's going to be amazing this week against the Chiefs. I am confident in it. Travis Kelsey, you draft him in the second round. You're all, always going to be playing him. He's always a guy that is on Pat Mahomes' side and is a solid, a great tight end to start every single week. The next game, here's the Broncos at the Green Bay Packers. Now, you are going to be starting Jimmy Graham for the Packers. Now, I know he is a touchdown-dependent guy. He put a goose egg up on your team last week. But you're still going to have to rely on him. He's a guy you picked up off the waiver wire. You drafted super late. There's not many options to start at the tight end position. And Jimmy Graham is one of those guys that Aaron Rodgers does look his way. We're going to hope Jimmy Graham plays better this week against the Denver Broncos. Now, you are going to be sitting Noah Fant down. Noah Fant, he, he's getting some usage. But it, like Joe Flacco will throw it to him two yards behind the line of scrimmage. And you're just losing points at that point. Don't start Noah Fant. The next game, here's the Panthers at the Arizona Cardinals. Now, you are going to be starting third leg Greg Olson because he's going to drop his drawers and show your opponent his third leg. He is playing pretty good. Now, he does have Kyle Allen, not Cam Newton at the quarterback position, so that could hinder his upside, but I still like Greg Olson this week. Younger quarterbacks typically target the tight end, or I don't even know how young Kyle Allen is. I don't know much about him, but what I do know is that he's a backup quarterback, and he may even be better than Cam at this point because Cam looks like ass. So we're going to be also sitting down all the Cardinals tight end. Austin, not even fucking, I don't even remember what the guy's name is. There's a bunch of guys on the Cardinals. You just don't want to start any of them. Next game, here's the Giants at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, you are going to be starting Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram's in every single week start. Evan Ingram is a guy that you want in your lineup. It's pretty much just the Eli, not the Eli anymore, actually. It's going to be the Daniel Jones and Evan Ingram show. So, like Evan Ingram this week. So you're, And you're also going to be sitting down O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard has been a huge disappointment. He was a guy I talked up a decent amount in draft season. I never ended up drafting him because his price was a bit too high for my liking, but I thought he was going to be pretty solid. Last week, put up the goose egg. Week one played, eh. So week three, I just don't even like him against the Giants. In certain situations, I will start him because he's playing the Giants, but he's definitely not a guy I'm stamping the must start or the start in this case on him. The next game here, we have the Saints at the Seattle Seahawks, and you're going to be starting Jared Cook from the Saints. I know that Jared Cook has not produced a lot. We thought that Drew Brees and him were going to have a great connection, but now Drew Brees canceled for the next six weeks. It's going to be the, not Jacoby Brissett, I should say, the Teddy B show or the Taysom Hill show. It still hasn't came out as I'm recording this, I believe, which tight end is going to be that starter, so or which quarterback is going to be that starter. So I will just lean the way of starting Jared Cook. Hopefully the tight end or the quarterback throws it his way. Now, Will Disley, the Seattle Seahawks tight end. I'm not too confident in, but I will be starting him. He's one of those guys that I can see a top 10 weekend every single week. He's a big guy. He seems like Russell Wilson likes to target him. The next game here is the Texans at the Chargers, and you're just going to be sitting absolutely everyone. Hunter Henry's out. It's Virgil Green, and then the Texans just have, I don't even know if it's Virgil Green. There's just a bunch of tight ends in this game, and you don't want to be starting any of them. The next game here is the Seattle, not not the Seattle Steelers, the Pittsburgh Steelers at the 49ers. Now, you are going to be starting Vance McDonald for the Steelers. Vance McDonald had two tutties last week. Him and Mason Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, seem to have a good connection. So, I like Vance McDonald this week. George Kittle on the 49ers, obviously, in every single week start. Him and Jimmy G have looked okay thus far. I think that the rapport will get better, and George Kittle will become that elite, elite, elite tight end that you drafted him to be. Next and final, oh, not the final game, the Sunday night game, my bad, Rams at the Browns, and you're going to be sitting everyone, Jared Everett, Higby, and then whoever the Browns put out there for David Njoku's replacement. You don't want to be starting any of those guys. Every single week, it's going to be a different Rams tight end that probably hops in the end zone, so you don't want anything to do with that. With David Njoku out, you do not want to be starting the other Browns tight end. The final game, the Monday night football, the most electric game of the week, the Bears at the Redskins, that may be a snooze fest. 
I'm going to be starting Vernon Davis for the Washington Redskins. Now, I know he did not perform all that well week two. Week one, he had a pretty good game. But I am confident against the Bears that the tight end can get that work. We saw week one, Jimmy Graham destroy the Bears defense and score a touchdown and looked pretty good. I think that the Redskins... Uh, will be pretty good this week and be able to throw a touchdown to Vernon Davis. I think that the Redskins have a better tight end, Vernon Davis, than last week. We saw Noah Fant go against the Bears. He's not all that good in comparison to Vernon Davis, so I'm comfortable starting Vernon Davis this week. And I am going to be sitting down Trey Burton. Now, I know if you're in a huge pickle, you're in quite the pickle, I would start him. But in pretty much every single situation, I am going to be sitting him. You can ask questions down below if you need any help. Which tight end should I start? There will be rankings videos. There may even be a rankings video later after this at night. Thank you all for watching. I love you all. Good boy. Click that subscribe button. Boy.